The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, You are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every task, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. God is good. All the time. All the time. Amen. In my family story, I was blessed with beautiful women. And certainly my wife fits that category, but I was thinking more in terms of my family of origin. It was Signe, my aunt, and my aunt Arlene, and then it was my mother, and there's one remaining, one remaining auntie yet alive. And, and when I think of them, I think of their mother and my maternal grandmother. And all of them had this beautiful, gentle spirit about them. And I learned from them an expression. And it sounded just like old sugar. Now, that usually meant something had gone wrong. Or that we were faced with something that was challenging. Or something had presented itself to us that was wrong. And a decision had to be made. And we were troubled. And, and there's irony in this. You know, there's an irony in this. Because the word implies something sweet. It's something that one would covet and look forward to. But it was an expression that usually betrayed a troubled spirit. Oh, sugar. So the devil has taken, is meeting with Jesus now out in the wilderness. And Luke is clear, for 40 days Jesus went into the wilderness to experience temptation. But Luke is very clear. He didn't go alone. He went into the wilderness full of the Spirit. And in Luke's rendering of the place of temptation in our life, it is truncated into a 40-day experience in which Jesus, full of the Spirit, encounters gross temptations. I would suggest to you that that temptation lasted longer than 40 days. I would suggest to you that that temptation indeed kept as part of it the company that kept Jesus during his entire life in ministry. But for the purposes of Luke, it's important to be able to show that from, say, the mountain of Tabor, where Jesus is transfigured in the transfiguration before their eyes, and the glory of God is revealed, down into the valley to another mountain on the other side, which is called Golgotha, where the bloody, beaten, dead, shredded body of Jesus is taken off the cross. Between here and here, there's a journey, and in that journey, there is the experience of temptation. It was often down in the valley that I would hear my sweet auntie say, Oh, sugar. Or my grandma, Oh, sugar. It wasn't to mask a curse word, that wasn't it. There was this irony. It always kind of piqued my imagination. Oh, sure. What's this about? The truth of it is, 
Temptation being temptation, by definition, temptation always looks good. Temptation, at least I've experienced my life, never looks bad. I think if you would survey the landscape of your own story, where you've encountered temptation, those moments, and usually it's that irony, there's this kind of sweet potential in it, where instead of saying no, we're more inclined to say, thank you. Oh, sugar. Sure. Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. There's three temptations. And the thing about temptation is, the thing that's always so fascinating about temptation, is it almost always has some good associated with it. And with Jesus' case, this is certainly true. There's no exception to this with regard to Jesus. So changing stones into loaves of bread, there's a great temptation there to use power for good. Jesus, you can feed yourself. We know that. Just think that you could be turning stones into bread and no one would ever be hungry again. We could solve world hunger. This would never be a problem. What a great temptation. With regard to power, Jesus, we know that power is abused in the world. We know that people use it and they manipulate it and they coerce and it's abusive power. You, Jesus, we both know you could use power with equity. And no one anymore would be abused by those who would usurp power and use it for. You know you could do that. Temptation is sweet. It looks good. Even Jesus being taken up to the highest pinnacle on being tempted, throw yourself down because we both know Scripture is true. We both know that the Father will send the angels to catch you the scripture would be fulfilled, you would never even your, dash your foot against a stone. And the world would see the glory of the one that God sent. It's a temptation. Looks good. But temptation, that is the experience of entering into the journey, when we maybe think of Jesus' 40 days or Lent for us, Lent is far less about giving something up. We kind of have this exercise. What are you going to give up for Lent? And there's lots of jokes about it. But Lent is really far less about giving anything up as Lent is about taking something home. It's about taking on the spirit of intentionality. It's about understanding that temptation, the gift of temptation, it brings us to the point of making a conscious choice. And that was what it was for Jesus. The temptation, so they look good, was not about following God. And that's what it's all about in the spiritual life. It's about following God. Making a choice. Make a choice. What's God's will for me in this? What's it about? That's the piece of intentionality. So when, and if it is somehow setting something outside where they're not being preoccupied with a food or with a beverage or with this or with that makes it easier to take on a grace to live in a grace to try to be closer to the God who lives within us then fine but it's not it is not about giving something up it is about taking something on and if for 40 days, which we should be like temptation is year-round, it doesn't just happen for 40 days. But if for a concerted period of time, we can uh, give ourselves over to focusing what it means to take this on in my life, well then so be it. Maybe that has hope for generalizing into the rest of life. But you know, that's what we do all the time. Every time we're confronted with a moment that sounds a little bit like, oh, sugar. The challenge is, the challenge is to see life different. A journey used to be a distance that was measured in one day. From here to here was your journey. A pilgrimage is looking back and seeing the journeys accumulate. And what have I learned in those journeys? 
The pilgrimage of the life of faith is simply being mindful of what has been put on me and how I choose differently. See if this helps you. It is my experience in life as pastor, as someone who has to live with his own brokenness, as someone who tries to be a man of God, tries to be a husband, tries to be a father, tries to be a friend, all those things. My experience in life is, is that most of us really don't want spirituality as much as we want magic. Because you see, magic is the illusion of control. Magic says, I could make this happen. Jesus was tempted by magic. We like the illusion of control. Spirituality is the experience of entering into the journey with God's grace upon us, believing that in each moment there is the opportunity to choose differently. <coughs> oh, sugar. The sweet irony out of the gift of brokenness comes the gift of being God's person in the world. That's where I want. God is good. All the time. All the time.